With the help of the Spirit of Truth this morning, we're going to look at something, maybe with Noah's help too. We'll look at something this morning. Uh, beloved, uh, it is good to, to have the victory. It is good to know that you have the victory, uh, especially in the world that we're living in, uh, in the, the times that we're living in. And uh, with the help of the Spirit of Truth, we're going to ask and see, is America under judgment? It's, it's a thing. So many people say, well, because of this, judgment is coming. Because of that, just God does things through patterns. Yeah. And, and, and knowing that, beloved, it is easy to see that judgment is not coming on America. Judgment is set fully on America right now. Uh, turn with me in the book of Romans, if you will, the first chapter. We're going to look at a few things, beloved. We're going to look at different kinds of wrath. Uh, and God has different ways that he uses wrath. There's eschatological wrath, which is the final outpouring of God's wrath in the last days. In, in the last days on this wicked planet before Christ returns to set up his reign. Then there's cataclysmic wrath. There's hurricanes. There's tornadoes. There's floods. There's stuff that happens all over the place that people attribute to evil. But it is God that sends the storms, beloved. It is God that controls the weather. And he is trying to wake people up. Then there's the... the uh, the consequential wrath or, or, or the wrath of sow, sowing and, and, and reaping what you have sown. It is people living lifestyles of sins and, and that sin eventually will catch up with that person and they reap the lifestyles that they have sown. And then there's eternal wrath where God will turn someone over into the lake of fire to burn for eternity and eternity regardless, beloved, if you believe it to be true or not. And then there's the worst, the most scariest of all, which is abandonment. Wrath. We have preached a message similar to this before called abandonment of judgment. But it is proof of God's wrath on America is the condition and the position we find ourselves in today. And with the help of the spirit of truth, with the scripture supporting it, it'll be easy to see. And you'll be left with no other conclusion, beloved, that we are indeed under God's Amen. judgment this morning. Help us, Father God, in the blessed name of Jesus. Now... Whenever someone hears the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, you can turn, well, matter of fact, go there. In Genesis chapter 19, Genesis chapter 19, we'll just trust the spirit of truth this morning without notes. I'm, I'm believing that uh, he will guide us through here. Genesis 19, if you remember in Genesis 18, the angels of the Lord showed up and was talking to Abraham and he was begging him for mercy on the city. Uh, if we find 40 righteous, 30, if 20, if 10, and the angel of the Lord said, hey, if there's at least 10, I will not destroy the city. Sodom is where we get our name Sodomy or Sodomai. So everybody knows this, this story very well. But everybody thinks that is the reason that Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. That is not the reason Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. That was just proof of God's final judgment that was on that nation before its destruction and Cain. That's what we need to see. That's what the spirit of truth is trying to tell you this morning. That is where the alarms need to be sounding and that is where you need to be getting the warnings out. Amen. Beloved, it is seriously down to the individual Amen. salvation of the individual soul. America is a country well, you can look at it. It doesn't look good for us. Biblically speaking, prophetically speaking, we know that America doesn't hold out. <laughs> all nations, all nations go against Israel. Right. America would be thus included. So if God doesn't lie, and we know that he does not, we need to see where we're at. We need to see where we're at, and then we need to start looking at that as how and how we should be walking in our everyday lives and what we should be doing while we're sojourners and pilgrims here. In, in chapter 19, beginning in the verse 5, this is after the angels had come in, and Lot had taken them in. <clears throat> they called unto Lot in verse 5, and they said unto him, where are the men which came in to, to thee this night? Bring them out that we may know them and that we may know them in the Hebrew is that to have illicit relations with them without being too frank with all the young ears. I think you understand what they were talking about. Lot says, no, I've got two daughters that have never known men. Let me send them out to you. Lot understood full well what it was that they were after. You look over in... Uh, Verse 14, Lot went out and he spake to his sons-in-law because the angels warned him. said, look, if there's anybody else in this city that you have, you need to go tell them. And what did his sons-in-law, how did they look at Lot? They looked at him, it says in verse 14, as one that mocked unto his son-in-law. Just like everybody else today, you try to get the warnings out and they look at you like you have lost your mind. And it is as if they're mocking you. And we're told that mockers and scoffers are going to be here. And that's another signal of the last days. So everything is going according to 
as it is written. Nobody's catching God off guard. This is all by God. We had just read it previously in 1 Kings chapter 8. How the, the kings that come was all according to what God had set up. The people that are in position of leadership now are here representing the people. Did you know that when Bill Clinton was caught in this scandalous affair with Monica Lewinsky that his approval rating went up? Why does his approval rating go up? Because the people of America are just like that. And he made them feel comfortable because it, 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 it wasn't showing light on them, but he was one of them. So the people of America like that. You get leaders that represent the morality of the people. So has God abandoned America? Psalm 9 and 17 says that the wicked in all nations that forsake God shall be turned into hell. Not maybe, shall, will. So it, where do we stand? Well, we know that Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. And everybody says, oh, but it's because of the homosexuality. Go to Ezekiel chapter 16, and you will see that the reason they were destroyed, beloved, the homosexuality was just proof of judgment setting on them. When God leads a person over, when God leads a nation, when God leads an individual to their own selves, that is the worst place you could be. Everybody says, follow your heart. Proverbs 28, 26 says, he that trusteth in his heart is a fool. For the heart of man is wicked and is evil. You cannot trust in your own hearts because if you're left up to your own decisions, to your own choices, without God's influence through the spirit of truth, you will serve yourself. There's no way around it. it if you are left up to your own corrupt minds, you're in bad, bad, bad trouble. And see, that's what we see today. People's consciences are seared. They don't have an ability to discern between good and evil or right from wrong. Everything is okay. And it is not okay. The, thing, the, the reason that it's okay is because God has rejected that society for forsaking him and let them live out their time. And the things that we see coming to pass is that consequential wrath or reaping what you have sown. Reaping what you have sown. It is not the children. We always say, well, the, the children are rebellious. And they are. But it's because of the mature generation above them that wouldn't take them to church, that wouldn't get God preached to them, that wouldn't show them the love of God in their homes, that is the ones you need to look at. The same generation that the, the sexual revolution came from. Because that's when it really started heading south in, in America. Paul addresses in Romans chapter 1, but in Ezekiel 16, beginning of verse 48. This is why Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. As I live, saith the Lord... Sodom thy sister hath not done, she nor her daughters as thou hast done, thou and thy daughters. Now he's addressing Israel. And he says, Sodom ain't as bad as y'all. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Here was her sin. Listen. Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her hand, in her and her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy. And they were haughty, and they committed abominations before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw good. Did you see homosexuality in there? No. Nope. They were haughty. They were full of idleness. They were full of bread. They were well fed. They had too much time on their hands to serve the gods of selves. A narcissistic society they were. They didn't take the time to help their neighbors that were right across the street who they knew was hurting and was struggling, but yet it's all about me. It's if it's nothing to benefit me, I don't, I don't want to have nothing to do with it. Therefore, judgment was sent to Sodom and Gomorrah. You see, right before the angels of the Lord had come and destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, that the angels told Lot, said, you have to get out because we cannot do anything until you're out because God will not destroy the righteous with the wicked. I said, God will not destroy the righteous with the wicked. That's another thing people can't rightly divide. People are not discerning in this last days. The wrath of God is not appointed for the body, but you must be in the body Amen. because the wrath is surely coming. Amen. Now, we pick up the story in Genesis 19 at the latter end of God's judgment. When everybody is a depraved society, go to Psalms chapter 2. When the, they have been left to their own. Beloved, I'm telling you what, the last thing you want is left to your own. Amen. You hear that so many times. A, ch a child will say, leave me alone. Why, why can't I do what I want to do? Why do you have to train your child up in a way that it should go? 
when he grows up, they will shall not depart from it. But, but a child, you don't have to train a child to steal. You do not have to train a child to have hate. You do not have to train a child to be greedy. Those are sinful traits that we have as when we're born. But you do have to teach a child to love and to tell the truth and to share. Those things you have to teach children. We're born sinners. Kids know how to do the wrong thing right out of the box. Now, when you're left in that state to where you serve what you want to serve in your mind, remember, whatever captures the mind has got the man. Wherever the head is going, the body is going to follow. I don't care who you are. It's an impossibility to think otherwise. Whatever you focus on the most, beloved, I'm here to tell you today, in the spirit of truth, that is your God. I know some of you didn't come for this, did you? Well, bless God, you come, you come, and, and, and there's going to be there's going to be preaching this morning. There's going to be the word of God because God loves you, and God wants you to be aware. He don't want you to be walking around asleep. He wants you to be awake, sober in these last days, so that you may be effective for His glory. Psalm chapter two, beginning of verse one, says, "Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing?" The kings of the earth, they set themselves and the rulers, they take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, which is Christ, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Or let us, look, the biggest, the biggest problem in the world today is the church. The biggest obstacle, obstacle to us living the way we want to live and to us having a one world government is the gospel. So let us cast our, let the, 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 the ties that are binding, these chains that are withholding, let's get rid of them. Let's get rid of them. Let's take away your Second Amendment right, so we can take away your First Amendment, which is your freedom of speech. People says it can't happen here. I must have to tell you, but, but remember, now Germany was a Christian nation as well. Germany freely voted in the people. Hitler that did what he did to those people. The first thing he did, pass health care. The second thing he did was take away their guns. And then the murder started. It can't happen here. Don't be so naive. When absolute power is given to a few, there is absolute corruption. The forefathers knew it. That's why the, the, the ones that are trying to warn people are fighting so hard. Because the others are too dumb to see. The Bible calls it willingly ignorant or dumb on purpose. Did you know it's possible to be dumb on purpose? You see what is happening. You hear what is happening. But you choose to ignore it or go on with your life anyway. You are hardened by the deceitfulnesses of, of, of sin or blinded by the God of this world. One of the two. But it, it is a very sad situation. Look, look on in verse 4. He that setteth in the heavens shall laugh. Who is that? God. He that setteth in the heavens shall laugh. And the Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak to them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure or trouble them. God's going to be in heaven laughing. People say, well, God is love. He is love. He's also a consuming fire. He's also a God of war. God is love is an attribute of God. God is where everything comes from God. You have to quit trying to label God as though you've got him in a box on a shelf. And remember that God is. God is everything. God is bigger than all time, space, matter. God is bigger than heaven and earth. And you cannot contain God in a box and you cannot treat God if he's your savior as your spare tire and just pull him out when you need him. If you are doing such, he is not your God. Ask the Holy Spirit of truth right now as you're sitting there. Show me my God and I promise you the first thought that flashed through your minds, that's your God. You need to repent and seek him because he is coming. Jeremiah 25. Jeremiah 25. Pray to God you brought your Bibles. This is a Bible church. Praise God. Jeremiah 25. I want to, I want to show you something here. Everything that we see, boy, we, we're fast to point it out. We'll say, oh, the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil. The devil's a defeated foe. Amen. He gets credit where credit is not deserved. He gets way too much glory. It is God that is in control of everything. It is God who is going to have the final say-so of the things that takes place. It is God that keeps you through his own power. Amen. Or that blinds you to the hardness of your hearts. Either one. If you are a child of God, you need to be zealous and on fire this morning. 
and thanking him for mercy and for grace. And if you're not, you need to be kicking, screaming, knocking down doors to try to find out why not. Verses 15 and 16 of Jeremiah 25. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel unto me, Take the wine cup of this fury at my hand, and cause, how many of the nations? All the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. And they shall drink and be moved and be mad, because the sword that I will send among them, or God's going to confuse them. This derision, this confusion. They're going to be mad, not mad like angry, mad like insanity. We asked, how, how can people not see what is in front of their face? It's because they don't have eyes to see. They don't have ears to hear. If you have been given eyes to see and ears to hear, then God is going to hold you responsible to share the warnings, to share the, 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 the ministry of reconciliation, which is Christ's sins, Christ's atonement for our sins on the cross of Calvary. Are you telling anybody about Jesus lately? Right? Are, are you doing anything to try to lead people to Christ? Because that is the single most important thing in this life. Amen. It's the single most important thing in this life. I know it's extreme. Hey, I'm old-fashioned. I believe this is the Word of God. I believe this is the inerrant Word of God, and you cannot prove it wrong. And if anybody would love to try, I would love you, would, would your intellect to sit down and show me where the Word of God is wrong. Amen. The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. The fool. Look at John 3, John 3, verse 36. John 3 and verse 36. John 3, because this is where we have ourselves today. You either are in Christ or the wrath of God is remaining on you. It is abiding on you. It is dwelling on you and in your house. People say, man, why are we having such a hard time? Why are we... Because the Bible says, whom the Lord loveth, he, he loveth, he chasteneth until they return unto him. So if you're having hard times, if you're having difficulty, well, chances are, because we all know what we deserve, right? Amen. If you got what you deserve, we'd all be consumed in a minute. Right. But because of his mercy, we're not. His compassions are new every morning. If we are going through trials and tribulations and trouble, chances are God is trying to get your attention. Amen. He loves you, and he will do whatever it takes to get you. You don't believe me? He loved you enough to let his own son die for you. Don't think somebody else can't. Amen. That's how much he loves you. You need to start seriously thinking about the nature and the character of God and what length it is in which he will go to win you over Amen. and to gain you. Remember now, as you're sitting here, he let his own son give up his life for you. Don't think that somebody else in your family or one of your family members can't lose their lives in order to gain you. So if you love God, don't play games with God. If you love your family, don't play games with God. John 3 verse 36 says, He that believeth, present tense action verb, not something you once did when you were 12. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. It means it remains, it dwells. How? It abides on those, on those that do what? That believe not. That, that believe not. A, a lot of folks say they believe God. A lot of folks say they believe Christ. A lot of folks claim themselves to be Christians. But yet, they don't pray to God continuously. They don't spend all their time praying for their fellow man. Because Christ said, they will know you are my, my disciples. How? If you have love one for another. Are you showing love? one to another? Are you really concerned? Because if you're showing love one to another, then you're going to be serving one to another. And one, one and another will be above your own personal needs. We so often will put our own, oh, I can't do this because I. I can't do that because I. You see the problem there? The common denominator? I. There's only one way to joy, and it's through Jesus, others, then yourselves. That is how joy is spelled. And, and in the 21st century, we have a mixed ideal, or we're so confused, even as Christians, about our obligations and where joy is really found. Yes, fun to sing praises to God. Amen. I love Jesus. And I'll sing Him as a glory to my dying breath. But at the same time, beloved, this is church. And I'm not preaching to you. I'm trying to help you to see. I'm not preaching at nobody. This, this is the spirit of truth teaching us through his words what is really taking place in America today because so many churches are failing to do so. They're so consumed with themselves. They've got all these extra things going on. 
basketball teams, dramas, everything except what the Word of God says. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, not by dance teams, not by dramas, not by basketball leagues. All that stuff's good and fine. Do it somewhere else. Keep the church, what Paul says, is the foundation and pillar of the truth. Amen. This is the truth, the Word of God. Yes. So many people are falling short, and so many people are following people that are following short. Go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Who are you supposed to follow? There's only one. Who do you follow? God is spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So how do you do that? Through the teachings of the Holy Spirit. How does He teach you? Through His written Word. Through what is written. Not through new, fresh words. If you're getting new, fresh revelations, you're getting something other than from the Spirit of Truth because all Scripture is inspired by the Spirit of Truth, by the Holy Ghost of God. So if it's outside Scripture, it's outside God. Amen. But we got people, somehow, I got people sending me visions and dreams. I ain't never in my life seen the people who are so quick to listen to somebody else's dreams. If it ain't written, I'm not going to spend no time on it. Stop inboxing me with visions and prophecies. Amen. If it ain't thus saith the Lord, it don't mean nothing to me. I put my stake here, and I know in whom I have trusted. And if it don't line up with the Word of God, it definitely ain't of God. And guess what, America? God ain't focused on America as his pivotal point in prophetical history. It is Israel. Still yet. Believe it or not. But Americans, just like Sodom, are haughty. They're proud. You know, we even have a national song, I'm proud to be an American. Well, at least I think I'm free, right? Because you don't, definitely can't know that you're free anymore. Right? I mean, let's think about it. Let's be realistic. Colossians 3, verses 5 and 6 says, Mortify, put to death, therefore, your members, your body parts, which are upon the earth. Listen, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake, listen, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, or those that are walking in unbelief. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So, the wrath of God is coming on people for what? Inordinate affection. People have, have made it acceptable to have Lovers or love lives outside of matrimony. And they've also made it acceptable to have those same said relations with the same sex or with animals. Yeah, I, I know it sounds crazy, but you know in Germany right now they're having to meet because that same nation that willingly started this snowball effect, they have parlors set up for animals. Yeah, it's a fact. They're having, they're having to meet because it is a, a, a national problem. And people say, hey, I ought to have my rights because I love that animal, just like a homosexual would their mate. It is called a depraved mind. It is called a seared conscience. You do not have the ability. It is biblical. And these, are, I know they're frank topics, but these are what you need to be looking at because it is the world we're living in. And for these things, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. So is this what brings the wrath of God? No. This is proof of the wrath of God. This is proof of the judgment of God. And that's where you need to be walking. And that's where you need to be looking. Because, beloved, He is coming to redeem, to collect His, that He has already bought at the cross of Calvary, whether you believe it or not. And this world is going to be in a terrible, terrible place once He who now leadeth. Or he who now restrains is taken out of the way. Christ said the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. But when the body of Christ is taking place in the marriage supper in heaven, the wedding supper of the Lamb, when that is going on, Lord God, at what's going to be taking place when the wrath of the Lamb is poured out on earth. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4 says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So we have a compound problem. We've got the God of this world blinding people's eyes. Because you got to work. And, 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 you know, football's more important than this. And everybody, you know, 
You know how it is. You, down here in Alabama, you're either rolling with the tired or, or, or you're war eagle. And, and, that, and on, on any given Saturday, you will scream yourself to where you can't talk. And people can talk about eternal life and the, the atonement that Christ paid for. And people say, Amen. Amen. You don't get excited about the Savior of all mankind, but you will go insane over a football game. It's our priorities are jumbled up. The God of this world hath blinded the minds of people. And when you compare that with 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14, how the, the carnal mind, the unregenerate mind, cannot understand the things of God. Because they're, they're taught by the spirit of truth. So if you've got the devil blinding people, and then you've got people unregenerate that are blind, you see the situation we find ourselves in. And you've got a whole nation of people that will not acknowledge God. Get him out of the schools. Got no place in schools. Of course not. Of course not. You come from monkeys, rocks, and soup. <laughs> it, common sense. Let, lay the Bible aside. What, what, what makes more logic? Everything was created from nothing, from nobody, or everything was created from nothing by somebody. Just forget the Bible. Which, which, is, which makes common sense? Something was created from nothing by somebody. Right? In order, in order to have a something, you must have a someone. Right? But the atheists teach otherwise, and, and your tax dollars are paying for that in our schools. But you try to interject creation to them, see what happens as you turn into Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. This is how we know. If we're looking for proof of God's judgment. Now, I don't have a title, but if I, had, if I was going to title this, it would be proof of God's judgment on America. This is proof. Because the things that Paul is writing about that he was having issues with then are definitely evident and manifested to us now. Romans chapter 1, beginning in verse 17, or 18. Beginning in verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed, made manifest or made obvious, or, or, or it's, we can see it. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. So they try to suppress, restrain the truth. Shh, don't say that. Those are hard topics. Tell everybody God is love. Shh. God is just love. Shh. They're suppressing the truth. God is love, but if you do not know God is a consuming fire, you are surely to walk outside your bounds. And I don't care, beloved, if people ain't preaching the whole gospel, it is a lie. And any time you tell half the truth, it is still a lie. So half the gospel, therefore, is a lie. You cannot tell people that God is love without first showing his patterns of what happens to people when they forsake him. Because everybody's got in their eyes, God is a papaw. You can get up on his lap, yank his beard, slap his hat off his head. That's the, that's the, the false God that 21st century uh, Christianity has created for themselves. And our God is righteous and holy. And the biggest judgment, the most wrathful judgment that he ever did was on his only begotten. So that we might all be saved when he judged sin on the cross of Calvary. And so many people neglect it or don't take it seriously. They say a little repeat after me, I'm saved, yeah, I got saved, and their lives never change. If there is no change, guess what? There's no change. I promise you. Uh, uh, verse 19 says, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, it's revealed in them, for God hath showed it unto them. Now, now we're, we're, we're approaching this point to where the abandonment judgment is going to be painfully obvious. This is what Paul is talking about. He's talking about God. Three times, he says in this chapter, gave them over, which is a Greek term meaning to hand a, a prisoner over for his sentence to get what's coming to you. Is anybody hearing this yet? This is, not sign, this is not what's going to bring judgment. This is the sign, the, the positive proof of judgment sitting squarely on top of us. I know it makes you uncomfortable, but it should. You should not be able to sleep Beloved, until you get out and do the work that it is the Lord would have for you. We've got family members that are going to go to hell. 
that are going to be lost and dying, even kids that are the age of accountability, whatever age that may be, depends on their intellect, if we do not start speaking up for Christ and for God and quit worrying about offending people. Amen. Verse 20 says, For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood, by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead so that they're without excuse. Beloved, even if people have never heard the gospel, God has revealed himself to them in some form or fashion. And just like the Ethiopian in Acts chapter 8 from about verse 26 and on where the Holy Spirit sent Philip to preach the gospel to him. If you are seeking God and if you respond to the revelation that God has given you that he is real, he will make a way for you to hear the gospel of Christ Amen. Jesus. Because whomsoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not the Bible scholar or nobody. Whomsoever. So if you respond to the revelation that God, here we're told in verse 20 that everybody has received at some point or the other. If you respond to that, God will get you the message to you so that you can have faith and be saved. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. So God will get you the word, but you have to respond to his revelation. They're without excuse. Verse 21 says, because that, listen, this, this should wake you up. When they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful. But would they become vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Go to Leviticus chapter 10. They, they when they knew God, did y'all just hear that? Paul said, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. They weren't thankful. Do you know that for every single thing we receive, we should be thanking God for it? Even the little, the, the little things that, that's, you know, there's a tornado comes through and tears down your house. Well, thank you, Father, that we weren't in it. You know, it, it, is, it is astounding to me at how much opportunity we have to glorify God and we miss it. Amen. And we miss it. The opportunities arise daily, and we let it slip. Our sole purpose, the reason we breathe, is to sing of His glory. Remember that song we were singing a minute ago? All of creation, sing with me now. The reason we breathe is to sing of His glory. And you know what? The Word of God says the same thing. Everything should glorify God. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 3. Then Moses said unto Aaron, because God had just consumed the two sons of Aaron for offering a sacrifice that wasn't ordained. He said, this is that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and before all the people I will be glorified. Then Aaron held his peace. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 10 and 31 that whether you eat or whether you drink, Whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Are we doing that today? Are we doing all to the glory of God? Because once again, this is the days we're living in. Pay attention. Go back to Romans chapter 1, verse 23. It gets back to people. I don't know if I had a penny for every time I heard somebody say, trust in your heart. Trust in your heart. Y'all have heard that, right? We've all heard it. Proverbs 28 and 26 says, he that trusteth in his heart is a fool. Why? Because the heart's wicked. You gotta have a transplant. You gotta have a, a, a renewed heart given to you. And we know that we're not talking about the organ that pumps the blood. We're talking about the capacity, the, the faculty that, that gives you the ability to discern between right and wrong, the, the, the ability to make the right choices. Your conscience. The thing in you that allowed the thing that's never gonna die. Your soul, if you will. It's gonna be eternal somewhere. 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 Romans 1, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Because we know that foolishness of preaching, or the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that perish. Because they're educated. People have degrees. They have numbers or letters before or after their names. So they're very smart. People are so wise, they become fools. And look, verse 23 says, they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God, or uncorruptible God, into an image made like to a corruptible man, and the birds, and the four-footed beasts, and creeping things. People change the glory of God and set up their own gods. People hear from God, see His revelation, but yet they would rather worship birds and animals. Just like Aaron did when Moses was receiving the commandments. What did he do? Set up golden calves, and they were down there worshiping them. It is no different in the world today. 
You have people going nuts over animals. And hey, nobody should hurt animals. I, I'm, I'm all, I believe wholeheartedly in that. But people serve animals more than they do God. People are all into recycling. Hey, you should recycle. But instead of worrying about plastic bottles being recycled, why don't you worry about what's getting stuck inside the plastic that's being recycled, like 3,000 babies a day in America through abortion. We have a jumbled up perspective on things. And God is looking at things from afar with a simplified view. And it can be the same for us. This is where we're at. Verse 24 says, wherefore, God, here's the first one. And wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. So the first mention of giving them up, remember, that, that means in the Greek as in turning a, a prisoner over for his sentence. To dishonor their bodies between themselves. So the first sign of judgment on a culture or God's abandonment judgment on a nation or a people group would be like a sexual revolution. Have we ever had one of those in America? I think we did. It was in the 60s, wasn't it? Yeah, you remember the National Organization of Women come up out of the dark with their hellish demonic teachings and trying to bust up family and what God had instituted as a, a family between husband and wife, telling women, I don't, don't, don't give that man respect like that. He's, look. It started back in those days and really started going downhill because we had a sexual revolution. And ever since then, things have, people have been getting promiscuous, things have been getting loose, and nobody has really tightened up or even cared about anything. Remember, I stated earlier, Bill Clinton's approval rating went up when the nation found out that he had had an affair because the nation was just like him and they felt comfortable sitting under somebody like that. All right, Russ, read on. So has there been a sexual revolution? We know that they have. Verse 25 says, Who changed the truth of God into a lie, and they worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. You know, they've even changed the Bibles. Well, I know what God says between a husband and a wife, but hey, I know what the Bible says, but. You ever hear that? I know what the Bible says, but. They know what God says, and they still do what they want to do anyway. Because somehow they've created a God for themselves. The God I serve would not judge or destroy me for this. Because my God's love. He said they, they, they serve the creature more than the creator. Who is blessed forever. Amen. Who's the creature? We are. Who do people serve in America? Themselves. Who's your God? America. I'm not talking to anybody. If you spend more time serving yourselves or doing things, you know, because I deserve it. I know I'm going to go on this big lucrative vacation because I deserve it. We deserve time off. I deserve it. Now, if we got what we deserve, we'd bust hell wide open. Amen. That's what we deserve. Right. But because the mercy of God, and I'm talking about me. I ain't talking about nobody. Y'all may be perfect little angels, perfect little saints. Me, I ain't. I'm just a man. And I need the blood of Jesus. And I need to be in him. To be sanctified and to be safe in this world and in these, these, these winding up days that we're in. Verse 26, his second time he says this, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. So are we under judgment? Has the women, why did he use women here? As John MacArthur had pointed out before, you know, because a woman has a motherly instinct. And usually, and here he mentions women first, because if you really want to see the depravity of a society, check its women out. If they have given themselves over to lesbianism, when they have a natural, nurturing, motherly instinct to be mamas, they don't want to slaughter their babies and call it choice, and, and they have a natural, uh, God-given desire to procreate, if they are pointed out and lesbianism is mentioned first, then do we have a problem with lesbians in America today? Are they here? Yeah. Yes, they're here. So we've not only had, you not only have a sexual revolution, but you also have a homosexual revolution. Isaiah 3 and 9 says they declared their sin openly as Sodom and Gomorrah. They hide it not. Can you see that today? Sure you can. The, the leader of the so-called free world is standing up there condoning it. 
saying he dreams of a day. Martin Luther dreamed of a day when a little black baby and a little white baby could sit down and eat at the same table. The man that's representing America now dreams of a day when homosexuality and bestiality is accepted and it's a normal way of life. Can you see how far we fell? Verse 27. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, they burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet or which was fit and which they deserve, working that which is unseemly. I, you, I don't have to paint you a picture, okay? And, and, and the recompense, the payback that they get is they die from age. They're, they're, they're emotional basket cases. They're nuts. They kill one another. Violence in the homosexual community against one another is out the roof. Because they don't understand that they have been given over to their own depraved minds, to their own sexual inhibitions, and there's no restraining them. There's nothing to hold them back. There's more pornographic websites in America than there are hairs on your head. And preachers, teachers, men of high standing, women too, are all checking it all out. Because they can't stop. And they know the judgment of God which is coming and they'll do it anyway because they have been given over. Oh, if people could just see that. They'd hit their knees and they would beg God. Verse, 27 say, or verse 28 says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. They, they didn't like to put God at the forefront of their way of thinking. They didn't like to be focused their mind on God. That's what he's saying. Even, even though they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God, here it is again, gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So you want to forsake God? You don't want to think about God? You want to give lip service to God? You want to have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof? Or you want to be ever learning but never coming to the knowledge? If that's what you want, chances are you're there. Amen. Chances are God has given you up to a reprobate mind, which means rejected. A rejected way of thinking. If anything that gets said in the Bible, if you have ever at any point read the Word of God or somebody has read it to you and you say, yeah, but, strong possibility, you're reprobate. The Word of God is final. By the Word of God, the heavens were framed. If you, yeah, but the Word of God, you are in serious, serious trouble. Amen. There is hope. 2,000 years ago, God himself manifested in the flesh, came down from his creation to humble himself and take on the form of a man for the sole purpose. His birth was so he could die, so that our death might mean living. We die in Christ so that we may live if you will only receive him, if you will only seek him out. But I'm here to tell you, beloved, that judgment ain't coming to America. Judgment is laying flat smack dot that right on top Amen. of America. We're leading it because the aforementioned websites that I mentioned, we're putting more of that out into the community, into the world now than we are the gospel. Google America's number one export and see what you come up with. Yeah, it'll sicken you. It's profitable because why? People like it. Because they're wicked. They're, they're left to themselves. God can recover anybody from any condition that you're in. If you are backslidden, if you're in any of the states aforementioned, and you hear God speaking to you through the spirit of truth, all you have to do is seek him out. There are no magic words from me. There is no magic prayer that you're going to get. You stop what you're doing. Repent and seek the true and living God. And he will have mercy on you. And it is never too late. Never too late to receive Christ if you still hear from him. So is America under judgment, beloved? I believe just the society we're living in, just the agendas that get pushed by the people that are supposedly representing we the people show that indeed proof is or the judgment is on America. Yeah. Judgment's not coming. It's in its latter stages. So please, please awaken from your sleep. Please start spending time on what is important. Your family, your friends are precious to you. I know they are. Start loving them enough to offend them if you have to. 
in the gospel of Christ. You get the seed sown. You're not going to save anybody. God does the saving. But it's your responsibility to sow them seeds. Questions or comments? I know that was hard, beloved. But the Spirit